What is happening to the House Democratic Conference? Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is another Declaration of Truth from your host, Terry A. Hurlbut. Yeah, well, the House Republican Conference will continue with essentially the same leaders. <laughs> but <coughs> the entire Democratic House leadership echelon will change, and drastically. And this creates another mystery, an instant mystery. Someone ordered all these people either to bow out completely or take a demotion. Either that, or they all are afraid of something else. What could that be, and what does it mean moving forward? Before I answer, I do want to shout out to the prime sponsor of this channel, which is Conservative News and Views. Link in the description. Be sure to check out the awesome CNAV store. Scroll down near the bottom for that link. Lots of good merchandise there, especially this t-shirt that I have chosen for today, which depicts Plato, saying, No one is more hated than he who speaks the truth. And, as I hope to show, these top-ranking Democrats are reckoning with a truth that has caught, them, uh, caught up with them. Let me show you what, let me show you, and see if you agree. One more, <laughs> one more thing. Excuse me. If you like what you're about to hear, you can like this video. You can also click the bell icon to get a notice every time I come out with a new one. In fact, do you see the new icon, the heart shape with the U.S. dollar sign in it? That's the super thanks icon. If you really want to keep these videos coming, click on that and leave me a tip. Any currency will do, so long as it's legal tender. Now then. We all know the Democratic Party lost the House of Representatives last week. Politico's Big Map, to which I've left a link in the description, credits the Republicans with getting their 218th vote. And by the way, Representative Lauren Boebert, Republican from the 3rd District of Colorado, seems to have won re-election by 551 votes. The race was supposed to go to an automatic recount, but according to The Hill, challenger Adam Frisch, believing he couldn't even overcome 551 votes, conceded the election today. The recount might go on, but if it does, it will go on without him and without any funding from him. Hold this thought, because I'm going to come back to that race and to Mr. Frisch later. The House Republican Conference should have shaken up its leadership, but declined to do so. Representative Kevin McCarthy of California, the current uh, minority leader, will rise to the speakership. Everyone else in the Republican leadership will move up a slot. As an apparent sub to Republican rank and file who wanted to see new leadership, two incoming <coughs> committee chairmen announced an investigation of the president himself for corrupt business practices together with his son. Remember, I told you about that yes, just yesterday. But the House Democratic Conference will change almost its entire leadership echelon. Representative Nancy Pelosi of California started it on Thursday, November 17th. She announced she would not hang on as minority leader. Later that day, Representative Steny Hoyer of Maryland, who had been the majority leader, announced his retirement from leadership. Now, this I have from Reuters and the Hill. Representative, Representative Jim Clyburn to South Carolina, the current Democratic whip, <coughs> now will seek the position of assistant floor leader. He was already facing a one-slot demotion to conference chairman, but now he's going to run for a slot two grades below where he stands, not just one. The top leadership positions available to the minority party are leader, whip, and conference chairman. Other lesser leadership positions, like assistant leader, also exist. In addition, the majority party has the speakership. When a party loses its majority, everyone moves one slot down, and the lowest ranker is out of leadership. The Democratic Party lost its majority after holding it for four years, but now 
instead of merely stepping everyone one slot down, the Democrats are going to change their leadership almost entirely. The Hill lists three those in current favor to take the top three slots available to a minority. First, Hakeem Jeffries from New York as minority leader. Second, Catherine Clark of Massachusetts as minority whip. And third, Pedro Aguilar of California as conference chairman. Mr. Aguilar might face a challenge from Representative uh, Joe Negus of Colorado. He wanted the conference chairmanship for himself. Now, he would have had to compete with Jim Clyburn, but Clyburn wants the assistant leader position and has endorsed Aguilar for the conference chairmanship. Reuters included a mini-profile of Jeffries and touted him as the most likely man to become minority leader. And now, the $1,024,000 question you're all asking. Why? Before I tell you why, I want to shout out to a sponsor who can really help you through the economic storms to come. That sponsor is OurSilverLines.com. Do you feel like you are working harder for your money just to get by? You're not alone. The fluctuating economy, employment issues, and unexpected changes in life have left many families struggling over the past few years. Collecting gold and silver can help shield you against many of these challenges. But if you're like me many years ago, you don't know where or how to start. Our Silver Lines helps by connecting you with thousands of members who are learning the secrets to creating and protecting true wealth by collecting precious metals. Now, whether you just want to collect rare and unique coins or take advantage of the business opportunities this company provides, they can help you learn to live an exceptional life. Visit OurSilverLines.com to learn how you can build a legacy for your future. Now then, House Democrats are watching their entire top-tier leadership echelon step down or step out. Why? The most logical reason that any of the top three Democratic leaders would step out or down is their ages. Pelosi, Hoyer, and Clyburn are all in their 80s. They all have the longest, they also have the longest service in the House. Time was when age and seniority of service had their advantages, incredibly, and for no discernible reason other than the Democrats having lost their majority, that will not hold this time. Already you know something's wrong. Pelosi has shown some signs of cognitive impairment, almost as bad as that of the P resident, but Hoyer and Clyburn haven't. Clyburn has shown a very scathing partisanship, but no one expects any better of a whip anyway. In sharp contrast, the three new leadership favorites are as much as 30 years younger. Jeffries has another advantage. The Congressional Black Caucus lined up unanimously behind him and said they would vote for him against any challenger, including Hoyer. And by the way, the Congressional Black Caucus refuses admission to any but Democratic members. But under any other circumstances, a man like Hoyer would hang on. Not this time. Now, has the House Democratic Conference suddenly adopted a mandatory retirement age for leadership? And are we really to believe that Pelosi and Hoyer volunteered to become backbenchers? The day before the election, Politico speculated on leadership changes on the Democratic side. The biggest shock seemed to have been Representative Sean Patrick Maloney of New York, the head of the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee, losing his seat. But does that explain the shakeup? I don't think so. Instead, I believe that these three, Pelosi, Hoyer, Clyburn, in addition to getting over this sort of thing, don't believe their own hype anymore. In fact, Maybe they believe that the American people will explode in rage as crime and the economy get even worse than they already are. And none of them care to be uppermost in anyone's mind except that of their own constituents of their safe district. 
In fact, Adam Frisch, in conceding to Lauren Bovert, offered his own criticism. Colorado's 3rd District is rural, and rural voters have flipped Republican in the last 60 years. Frisch thinks he knows why. In his concession speech, he said, quote, Democrats have abandoned rural America and working-class America for the last many years. Republicans have had a monopoly over the backbone of this country, unquote Adam Frisch. Now, it took Donald J. Trump to capture the imagination of the urban working class, but the urban-rural divide is a fact and will only get more stark. I told you that earlier this week, didn't I? I'll tell you what I'll say I'm something else. Frisch even told his constituents to save their campaign contribution money to buy groceries. Not that their replacements are willing to take any hints. Rumors have Hakeem Jeffries being even more radical than Pelosi has been. In fact, Jeffries was a floor manager for the first impeachment of Trump. I have a link in the description to a tweet containing video of him doing the floor manager thing. But <coughs> AOC doesn't find him radical enough. No one expects Republican and Democratic relations to get better. Not under the incoming leadership they won't. But clearly Pelosi, Hoyer, and Clyburn have chosen to hide. Will it work for them? Stay tuned. Link in the description of the article, to the big map, to Hakeem Jeffries as a floor manager, to my Declaration of Truth Twitter account, and to Conservative News and Views. I've also left links to the awesome CNAV store and to rsilverlives.com, as I also mentioned. You know already about how to like a video, uh, turn on notifications, and leave a tip. On the end screen, I'm going to leave a subscribe link to my channel and links to yesterday's video about Biden being under investigation to my video. Uh, uh, to my video about how the country vote, the county vote map looks like something out of the Hunger Games, and my video about the FTX blowout. This is Terry A. Hurlbut delivering another declaration of truth and reminding you to let the truth set you free.